In part two, I'm going to talk about the tyre friction circle and also how to balance the car as you enter the corner. The tyre can give you grip in two different directions. It can give you grip under braking and acceleration and also under cornering. However, if you take lots of grip out of the tyre under braking or acceleration, then you lose cornering ability. And also vice versa, if you're cornering heavily, then you have limited braking or acceleration force that you can extract from the tyre. Therefore, it's important that you carefully balance the two. This is called the friction circle, and it is the equivalent of a pendulum that you mount on the front of your car. And this is the pendulum here. As you brake, it'll swing forward, and as you corner, it'll swing left or swing right. Now, ideally, you balance the two. So you brake hard in a straight line, then as you turn into the corner, you ease off the brakes and ease the steering on. And this allows you to follow the traction circle and extract the most from the tyre. However, what is common is people often brake very hard, ease off the brakes, turn into the corner, and they're not using quite a large portion of the tyre, which they can do if they get the balance right. So this is equivalent to losing a fair bit of lap time, and it is a very, very common way of driving. If you want to know more about the traction circle, then Speed Secrets by Ross Bentley is a fantastic book. You can get it on Amazon. I've read it and it gave me a great insight into how to balance the steering and the braking as you turn into a corner. Let's look at an example. This is Alex again at Porting Now, turn five. And what I've done is I've enlarged the G circle here so you can see it. And as he brakes into the corner, this will swing forward. And then as he turns, it'll swing to the right. But ideally, what you want to do is you want to follow the circle around. If it drops down and then goes out, then you're not using the tire to its maximum. So let's see what happens. So he hits the brakes, but he comes off the brakes and then starts cornering. So you could see that he wasn't following the outside of that circle so there must be some extra time that he can find if he balanced the car into the corner. So let's look at myself in the same situation. So I break about the same amount, and as I turn into the corner, I more or less follow the circle. You can see here that there's a little bit more that I could gain, but generally I was using a lot more of the tire on the entry to the corner than, than Alex was. I've driven a lot alongside Callum Lockie, and he has always stressed to me that it is important to get the balance right as you go into the corner. So you've got to ease off the brake and ease into the steering wheel to use that extra bit of tyre that a lot of people don't use. Callum runs the Gold Track track days, uh, but he also does tuition as well. And if you're ever at Silverstone, one of his track days, do book him, it's a fantastic time, you'll, you'll learn an awful lot. So let's look at another example of corner balance and how to get it absolutely right. And this is a video of me at Alton Park, and this is turning into turn one, Old Hall. And what we've got here, we've got a trace of the brake pressure, pressure, and also we've got a trace here of the cornering force, the lateral acceleration that the car is experiencing. Now, turn one is an extremely fast corner, has a very wide, fast entry, and one of the most important things, of course, is to use lots of the road. Now, you see the white line actually is quite a bit across from the actual edge of the track, so it's good practice to get your wheel actually over that line. They don't tend to do you for track limits on the entry to a corner, so you can get away with a little bit more. And as I turn into the corner, I'm blending off the brakes. So I've hit the brakes, but not very hard, not super hard and fast. 
because that can un unbalance the car. So you see there's a, a fairly smooth buildup of brake pressure. Normally, in a slower corner, I'd hit the brakes very hard, and you see a very sharp increase. But that would unsettle the car as it goes into a corner. Now, what you've got to remember is there's a lot of rubber and moving parts in the suspension. You've got the tread blocks. You've got the side wall of the tyre. You've got your bushes, and then you've got your springs, and you've got your dampers. So the best way to get the most out of a tyre is to let everything settle down. Now, professional drivers call this taking a set. And what it means is the car has moved as much as it will for that particular cornering force. So once it's settled on the springs, dampers, and the um, bushes, then the tyre can give you the maximum grip. If you try and ask for the maximum grip immediately, you're not going to get it because everything's moving and it will upset the tyre. So you can see here, I've eased off the brakes and I'm easing into the corner very, very smoothly. It doesn't have to be slowly, it just has to be smoothly. So let's have a look at the video and I'm going to play it twice. And the first time, if you watch this trace here, this is braking pressure that I'm applying to the brake pedal and you'll see how it comes on rapidly but smoothly and then fades off as I turn into the corner. So it builds up and then it slowly decays into the corner. This time, watch the steering wheel and you'll see that I turn in very, very gently. So watch here. So because the tyre won't generate its maximum force until everything's settled down, I've been very smooth off the brakes and very smooth on the steering. So the car settles down, and once it's at that point, taking a set, then you can ask a little bit more from the tyre and you get the maximum grip. 